Joining us now is Eugene Carroll and her attorney, Roberta Kaplan. We really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Love being here. What was it like to be with Donald Trump in that courtroom? He did not attend your first trial, but he was there when it came down to the money and what it would cost him. You hadn't seen him since 1996. I hadn't seen him since uh, he assaulted me in, uh, in the dressing room. Uh, and um, preparing to see him was terrifying. Uh, the days leading up, as Robbie uh, brought me around stronger and stronger, um, it was so, uh, I hadn't slept, I hadn't eaten, I couldn't think, I lost my language when she was trying to prepare me to go, uh, to do testimony in front of Donald Trump. And then when we were in the courtroom and Robbie went to the lectern, she said, good morning. Eugene, please state your name and spell it for the jury, for the court. And there he was, and he was nothing. He was just no power. He had, he was zero. That was, it, I was flabbergasted. And from then we just sailed through. She brought me in. She said, say your name. And I just looked at Robbie, saw he was nothing. And it came out from there. Did you, did you make eye contact with him? Many times. And what was that like? I'm t it, he's an emperor without clothes. It's like looking at nothing. It was like nothing. Were you surprised by that? Because the <laughs> yeah. environment, no, I can imagine, but the environment, not just from what you went through, but also the environment in that courtroom was a yeah. very different, very Ooh. volatile, very heated environment in terms of both uh, Donald Trump's attorney and Donald Trump for it to end up like that. Were you surprised? Yes, yes, I had been prepared for the worst force, you know, on the earth today, the most powerful, the most, the most effective, the most money, the richest, the most, you know, you know, and there he is, he's nothing. Why? It's just the people around him who give him the power. Mm -hmm. It's the emperor without clothes. It's uh, Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale. You know, it, people just gave him clothes when he wasn't wearing any. That Remember the fairy tale? So that's Donald Trump. Robbie, you're giving your closing argument, and Donald Trump gets up and he walks out. And I, I'm not sure if you could see him out of the periphery, right? I think your back was to him. But what did you think when you learned that he walked out? Yeah, so I, it's, it's true. I didn't see him at all because I was facing the jury and he was to yeah. my left. Uh, but the judge said something. He told me that he told the whole courtroom that he'd gotten up and left out, and walked out. And I thought to myself, whoa, like in a case about whether you can follow the rules or not and you can not be a bully, not following the rules and acting like a bully is not a good move. So I thought to myself, like, OK, that's just going to give us more money, honestly. You got uh, awarded 80, over $83 million from this jury. Trump's obviously appealing. He has the right to do that. Big question over the next couple of weeks, is he going to get a bond for that $83 million? If he doesn't, when could your client see that money or some of it? So he has two choices. He either has to post a bond, it's called an appellate bond, which requires him to put down 20 percent, or he has to deposit, which is what he did for the first verdict, the entire amount with the court. So 83 plus 9 percent, so call it $89 million. If he can't do either of those, then we can start collecting right now. And we will, for sure. Do you believe he can do either of those? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He didn't get a bond last time, so maybe he's going to try to deposit the funds. I don't know what he'll do. Eugene, one of the uh, <laughs> paradoxical is probably the best word I can put it, dynamics of this moment for him, for the former president and his legal troubles has been politically, he only seems to get more powerful within the Republican Party. Um, I understand you've been focused on the trial, but do you see that? Do you have concerns, not based on your trial specifically, but just about the fact that this person who you stared down in a courtroom has only gotten more powerful as all of this has played out and you've won repeatedly in these cases? It is a paradox. For him, the courtroom was not a courtroom to him. It was a campaign stop. That was clear. Um, so we had two different objectives. Ours was to win a case. His was to win voters. We'll see how that plays out, that he's uh, using me to win voters. Sexual assault, a man 
found liable for sexual assault is using the woman he sexually assaulted to get votes. You may soon, though, have quite a bit of his money, and I wonder how you plan to use that. Oh, it's inspiring. We talk about it a lot. <laughs> We're going to do good with that money. We're going to do... Mary Trump has suggested uh, we turn Trump Tower into an animal sanctuary, for instance. A joke. That was a joke, Poppy. <laughs> uh, no, but we're, we're inspired to uh, do not waste a penny of this. And we have some good ideas that we're working on. We're specifically aimed at well, what would oppose well, Trump? Well, Donald Trump hates women. Remember the New York Magazine, the famous quote when they said, Donald, what do you think of women? He said, women, they're not worth a piece of crap. Remember that quote? And so I think one of the things we could do, seeing as how he's very instrumental in taking away women's rights over their bodies across the United States, maybe we can think about how we can restore women their rights. Mm. Use a little of money for that. Mm. Do you think of what would happen if Trump is reelected? Oh, please. I can't think of that. I can't think of that. I don't think, I, I don't think it's going to happen. And Robbie, particularly, uh, tell them, Robbie, why you don't think that's possible. I just think it's what you saw in the jury, in the courtroom from the jury, that when people are really confronted with the facts, when the rules apply, uh, people see the truth about Donald Trump. And this isn't the first trial. He's got a lot of trials coming up before that election, and it's going to happen to him over and over and over again. And I don't think he has enough Americans who are willing to buy what he says in major rallies to elect him president. I, at least that's what I hope. I want to ask you, Robbie, about uh, how Trump's going to appeal this. We, we have a, a big clue from what his attorney, Alina Habba, said. You had asked Judge Kaplan, just for some background here, to block the court or Trump's team from being able to present legal arguments about the jury's rejection of the rape claim. They found him liable for sexual abuse. I want to be very clear on that and defamation. Alina Habba thinks there's a big chance for them on appeal because of what Judge Kaplan ordered here. Let's listen to her, and then I want to give you a chance sure. to respond. Here she was. Before I walked into court, that judge decided that every single defense President Trump had, we were not allowed to raise in front of the jury. It is in writing, and I encourage the journalists, the real journalists, to take the minute to look at his orders. There was no proof, and I couldn't prove that she didn't bring in the dress. There was no DNA. There was no expert. My experts were denied, two of them. Two of them were denied to come in. Your response, Robbie, and then, and then you, E.G., maybe you go first, because you weren't next to her. You couldn't respond in that moment. Would you like to respond now? Alina Haba is uh, gloriously talented. She's very skilled. She uh, has ludicrous confidence. And when you hear her speak, we understand that most of what she just said was entirely made up, entirely untrue. Yeah, I, I, I understand that that's what she's saying, because that's all she has to say. Uh, but Judge Kaplan, no relation, <laughs> uh, is one of the most respected judges uh, in New York City. All his rulings were completely appropriate. The rules are the rules. He followed the rules, and now Donald Trump and Ms. Hobber are going to have to follow the rules, and that's what the appellate court's going to say as well. After the president's win, former president's win in Iowa, he gave this speech where he was very generous and, and unifying and... People, for some bizarre reason, afterwards were like, this is the new Trump. And then New Hampshire happened. He had a very different uh, way of operating. After this victory for you all, he has not mentioned your name. He has not said much at all about the case. I'm wondering, is this going to be another one of those things where he does it for three days and then reverts back to form? Or is there a legal... When you're looking at this as a lawyer or as, as somebody who's been involved in this case, you say, there's a very real reason why that individual will not be talking about this ever again. Yeah, I mean, he's clearly being told uh, not to talk about it, and he's concerned that if he keeps talking about it, he's going to have to pay even more money than he's already been ordered to pay. Valid concern. Right, but as the judge noted in the middle of the trial, at times he can't control himself. I mean, the judge mm. said that to him. Sir, you can't you appear to be unable to control yourself. And if that, if that part of him takes over, then he could say something again, I, you know. And you're willing to bring another defamation case. Absolutely. Everything's on the table. Eugene, often uh, many women in this country and around the world aren't believed... And a jury of your peers believed you. Yes. 
and awarded you for that pain that you have endured, and then the defamation on top of it. What is your message to other women who are not believed, who don't have the platform you have? Well, this, this, this is why this decision bodes well for women across. It came at a time when we needed that positive, we believe you statement. Um, so this win really was uh, for every woman who stood up and been knocked down. Every woman. Um, and Robbie and I are here. We're, we have planted our flag and we want to turn things around and um, make sure uh, that women are believed.